Hey guys, thanks for tuning into another video. Before we get started, I need a minute of your time for a quick announcement. In this video, we'll be doing a sweet giveaway. We're giving away a full set of Fin Trail wading gear. That includes boots, waders, and jacket, open to anyone in Canada or the United States with free shipping. You can choose any set of gear, any size you need. Stay tuned to the end of the video or check out the website for all the details. Second announcement. That's right, I changed my shirt in between shots because we got some wicked new swag that just hit the Shopify store. So if you wanna support the channel, head on over to our Shopify store. We got tons of new shirt designs, new colors, new sizes. We got women's shirts and men's shirts, sweaters, and we got a ton of wicked sticker designs as well. The best way to support the channel is through the Shopify store, or if you want, you can check out our Rocky Mountain ATVMC link. Anything you buy from Rocky Mountain ATVMC, when you use our link, will send us a small commission. You wanted it, we got it. Camo shirts, finally. Tons of people have been asking for camo, so we got camo for men and camo for women, and we'll be bringing you more camo designs as things move forward. If you wanna help support the channel, head on over to the Shopify store, all the proceeds go directly back into creating more content for you guys to enjoy. I know you women have felt left out for a little while, so here you go. We finally got it. The Team AJP off-road wife shirt. Off-road wife, cook, ride, clean, repeat. Because we know, girls, we know you love it rough and dirty. <laughs> Those are mud splashes. Now, stay tuned. The video's coming your way. This is a badass edit. One of the best videos I've made for a while, so I really hope you enjoy it. And thanks guys, thanks for all the support you show the channel. Couldn't have gotten here without you. The numbers are growing. We're almost at 70,000 subscribers right now and you guys are blowing me away. Thank you so much to all the supporters, the viewers and all the fans. Uh, you guys are helping make my YouTube dreams come true. Like I said, could not have done this without you. Anyways, enough talk, enjoy the ride. What's going on guys? Say hey. hello everybody. Morning. 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 Day two, we are just Getting some breakfast, waiting for Tim to come with some Tim Hortons. Getting the muff pot loaded up, get some dogs in there. Corny's got uh, some pulled pork for his, right? Yeah, we're ready. Oh, and his onesie. <laughs> you can't see him, but he's there. <laughs> Camouflage. Yes, you Camouflage onesie flap. with butt flap. I got the butt flapper. Let everyone see your butt. Oh God, we're putting on a show. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, nice, oh. nice. It's too bad we don't get to see it. It'll be under the fin trail, right? Yeah, fin trail, oh. fin trail's awesome. Yeah. Courtney's loving his Was yesterday like your real first ride? Yeah, that? that's yeah. the first time I've used it out in the wild. So we're going to Greens Mountain today and there's some watery spots there so they'll be able to uh, put her to use. Yeah. yeah, well even yesterday we went through a couple of those puddles. And you don't care. Was, uh, yeah. You don't have to worry about like getting wet. Yeah, I went through them like, and then to this morning I looked at the machine and I was like, oh, we're pretty deep yeah. in the water there. Yeah, there's a couple of spots that we're deep. We don't feel yeah. it at all. Yeah. No, it's nice. Peace of mind, right? It is, it's awesome. So we're just gonna get stuff together here and then we'll pick up with you soon when everyone else gets here. Well, we are starting to get all ready here. Happy Hippie just got here. Brian Razor's here. Fish is here. Everyone else is here. We are on schedule. We're gonna get all geared up and hopefully hit the trail within the next hour to head for Greens Mountain. Gonna be a good time. Hey! What? It wasn't me. You okay? Oh yeah. Hey. Is that a four-wheel drive commander? <laughs> it's, it's possibly a four-wheel drive commander. With like both wheels in the front spinning? Yeah. It, I, Is this... All four actually rotate at the same time now. What's going on guys? Uh, we got fish here, we got me here, we got a front diff here. What do we got here, buddy? So, this is the moment so much of the interweb has been waiting for. What are we gonna get rid of with all, this? All those comments about me having to uh, get rid of that three-wheel drive, so well-only known for the Can-Amps, this is oh. what is on all of this for me, right here. This is from Super ATV. This is the Swift Track full front diff conversion through the Commander or the OG Mavericks, anything in that Can-Am era. Uh, Fish has a 2018 Commander 800. Correct. This is a full out diff swap for the front. And essentially what we're dealing with here is people saying like, yeah, Fish has got to get a locker. You got to get rid of that, that, that you know, front wheel, like the, the, the two wheel drive in the front. So essentially we're going to stop the three wheel drive Can-Am comments 
hopefully, by installing this thing. What this is, for lack of better terms, is essentially a Polaris differential in a Can-Am package. They've taken the internals in a Hilliard style differential essentially and packed it into a, a case um, that fits and bolts into your Can-Am. So this is a direct replacement for the front diff, the Visco lock setup in your Can-Am, Commander or Maverick or whatever you put it into. If you need the facts on that, you can check the Super ATV website. Um, essentially giving you full, true four-wheel drive and a locked front end. Game changer. Game changer. And it's a little different than just, um, it's a little different than just slapping a locker in there because my understanding is it, it functions like that Polaris setup where you don't always have that fully locked front end until you hit the gas and you need it. So steering effort and all that stuff won't be as bad as with some mechanical type locker setups where it's kind of always engaged and you'll hear people complaining about how tough it is to steer at low speeds. Um, all the electronics, everything in here is supposed to just plug and play, right? Plug and play. Um, I mean, essentially that's it. Uh, it. Yeah, you can check out the Super ATV website or your Super ATV dealer um, and, and you can order your set one of these. And you know what? They are reasonably priced for what you're getting. I, I believe so myself. What, it's yeah. like fourteen hundred or something. What was it? I uh, I think it's sixteen. Sixteen. So like around sixteen hundred bucks. But if you were to go price out a front differential for your um, your Polaris or your Can Am from the from the dealership, you'd be sitting right around that area too. So if your Visco lock front diff is giving you issues and you're going to be rebuilding it or you grenaded it, then I would highly consider. Um, stepping up to a unit like this, the reviews online are very positive for this unit. You did a yeah. you did a lot of research. I, I did, and the whole reason I went with this setup over like a locker is the tight trail rides that we do. I didn't want to be fighting the steering all the time in low or engaging, disengaging the four x four all the time. So with this, I think it will be way better for the tight trails. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And um, I did a bunch of reading myself. I talked to the guys at Super ATV um, and our choice basically at the end of the day came down between two. The decision was, do we go with the torque locker setup or do we go with the Swift Track, the full diff? The torque locker setup, you're taking apart your Can-Am front diff and you're replacing some components and putting their locking mechanism in. With this, you're getting a full, ready to go, bolt-in application. It bolts right up to your current drive line. Um, tell me about axles. Can you use stock axles over this, or did you find some other? No, no, them? you could use stock ox axles and all that. The only reason I'm running like the 2.0s and all that is because I got the forward A arms and all that. Right. So that's the only reason I, or else I'd be running just the plain Jane. So from from the understanding we've got is you could you can take your regular machine and just drop this bad boy right. in there and now you have true full-time four-wheel drive without that one wheel peel going on in the front. I mean and that summarizes it. You guys have been asking you've been telling fish he needs a, he needs a <laughs> locker. I mean, I, the whole world can't believe where the <laughs> heck you've been in that machine. And you know what? While we got you on camera here what else do you have in store for the commander? I know a lot, you, you've become kind of like a fan favorite on, on, the, um, on the channel and you're kind of like the, the you know, unofficial OG commander representative for the planet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so some, uh, some things that I've been working on over the last couple months from the last ride is uh, upgrading on the suspension. I've got some stage two Elkas on the way. Nice. That should be a game changer. I'm sure if you rode in the Commander and you have the stock suspension, you can totally understand where I'm coming Especially from. Especially once you step up to a bigger, heavier wheel and tire package. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, not only that, to uh, take care of actually that weight on the tires and that stepped up the primary to a CV Tech primary clutch and also upgraded to the SDM secondary clutch with a 3540 uh, um, Helix. Yeah, Helix in it. And I think that should be, I obsoleted the engine brake though out of that. So we'll see how that runs because I am quite used to running 
That engine But brake. my understanding is you can still get engine brake as long as you blip the throttle, right? From what I've, re from what I've about... read, yes and no. Okay, well, might be a bit of a learning curve It's there. going to be yeah. definitely a learning curve on that. But now you've also been mentioning that after the roll, let's do a little update because we haven't done a formal update. What damage did you sustain from that that nasty roll? So that roller coaster ride. And how many rolls was that? Five and a half. Five and a half rolls. Five and a half uh, crazy rolls. Uh, I've updated the uh, trailing arms to the extended four inch Super ATV. Uh, just to get that extra wheel clearance. I want to upgrade to bigger tires, which I've got, those XTR uh, 370s. Uh, did the rims as well? The rims as well. I did an X3. I got a good deal on some X3 rim speed locks for it. So, wheel spacers too, the right? wheel yeah. spacers. Uh, and the only other damage from that rollover was taillights. And tail like plastics. Roof. Roof? Yes. Well, <laughs> roof, roof, the that, roof yes. dislodge itself. That, that was... Actually, I'm going to have to talk to you about damages that roof struck my vehicle. And I think there's some messed up stuff in there. Like, I mean, I might need an RS1 differential for my machine oh, yeah? because of the sustained impact from the roof hitting it. You can see it in the video. It was okay. a pretty solid impact. Well, all I can say is um, mm, Bill uh, adrenaline junkies. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll build yeah. those guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get my lawyers to call. Yeah. Them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I mean, there's some sweet hop ups coming for the fish tank, and um, it's really gonna step it up. I mean, it, it's it's you've done pretty much everything that you can do on that thing now without going crazy like custom. Um, yes. So there's probably gonna be a few things in between, but with the clutching, with the new tires and wheels and the spacers, with the upgraded suspension, with that front dip. We've essentially stepped that thing into a completely different league when it comes to trail riding. Um, all the issues that we used to have with, with uh, the slow crawling and stuff like that, um, and there's tons of them, you guys are calling them out all the time. I, I really, I cannot wait to see how this thing functions with real four wheel drive and where fish can take this machine now with the suspension and, 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 and all these upgrades. It's gonna be really fun to watch. I think the big, big game changer is gonna be this dip right here. This is gonna be the biggest this, game changer, yeah. This with the clutch work, with the oversized tires and that weight. Yeah. I might not have to live by the theory of when in doubt, throw it out all the time. You might choose to. Still probably ride with that, but I don't, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to necessarily live by those words. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to, I think right now, this has really been holding fish back a lot. Um, and I think a lot of the off, a lot of the weird situations you find yourself in, like that little rollover on, on your side on the green Greens. mountain trail, yeah. probably caused by the fact that sometimes one of the wheels grabs and it pulls you a certain way. Heck, or, a part of that roll. Or could have been caused three wheel drive and that, that third wheel just turning, turning, turning and still not kicking in true four wheel. Right? And then you do have Rhino 2.0s at all four corners already, I do, right? Yes. So, I mean, essentially, this thing should be quite bulletproof. Um, it, it'll really turn into a very capable trail machine. Um, and, and it's going to be really fun to watch, and especially in the winter time when it's icy. You remember all the struggles you used to have of, of, of trying to get up <laughs> on the icy hills. How can I you think forget? this is really going to. I think this is really going to change it up and, and be awesome. So we'll leave you with that, guys. Leave your comments below. Um, lots of cool action coming your way. It'll be really cool to see how the fish tank performs with all the upgrades. I know a lot of you guys have wanted to do like walk around videos of the machines like the fish tank and Super Greg's Razor and Courtney's KRX. So on future trail rides, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the guys aside and we're gonna do like a walk around. We can consider this kind of like a, a very brief kind of in, like talk about what Fish's machine is, but we'll do a video once it's all together and, and we'll walk you through all the mods, what he's done, what he's learned, so that all the guys that want some more answers on the various machines can get those straight from the riders and get some feedback. I know a lot of guys watch these videos to try and choose their next machine or buy their first machine. So hopefully we can provide you with yeah. a little bit more info to help make that a little bit easier because it is a, it's a pretty hard thing to do to drop all that cash and make sure you get the yeah. right machine. Yeah, for no. sure it is. This is, this is, 
going to be like a monumental moment. Not only that, the CVT clutch and uh, for the primary and the STM secondary. STM secondary, CV tech for the primary and a, a Swift track from Super ATV and, for the front diff. And Elkas. You put them on? Have what? Elkas. <laughs> that's, that's a whole different story if we won't touch oh, face Oh yeah. You got them on though? Was, he, was it you being silly? Or? It was me doing the proper procedures. Not uh, Elka. Not Elka. But you got him on. I got him on. Oh, I bet you can't wait. This is being, this is bittersweet right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that thing. I'm not wearing this. <laughs> What's going on? I knew you'd be back for more. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm kidding. Yeah. Hi, brother. How hey, are you? Man, good. Hey, Say folks. Hi, internet. Hi, internet. How you doing? <laughs> Peace, love, and happiness. Look at this. I just hope you guys have a great day like we're going to have. Oh, we're going to have a great day. Yeah. Absolutely. Hi. How are you? How are you? Hey, man. You back? Good. Yeah, shake my hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Look um, at this. You're bringing in double trouble today, eh? Yes. Today we got double trouble. Where am I? Oh, oh shit. Oh, I, I got my drugs at the border. Oh, yeah. Give me a break. Oh, yeah. You should send them all your personal information right now. I did that once a week. Just once? Yeah, you're going to jail. Yeah. Oh, so we get me. Hey. Uh, Funny, came last weekend. He came back. Yeah, nice. nice. Oh, we had a great time last uh, awesome. week. You guys want to? I had my ass going like this. Yeah. So we met last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Where do they gotta go? You want to just park up on that uh, driveway towards the garage for the day? Right, right in there. You're good. Oh, beauty. Cool. And uh, if anybody else is coming, they can go over. I think here we're. Now. I think we're. We're done. Beauty. Yeah. You guys have a good day. Everyone's here now. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Nice. See you, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Ready? Are you ready for some fun? I'm ready. We got like a good lineup today. You're gonna have fun. Um, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. This is my first time with the enclosures. So I think I'm gonna. It's a perfect day. For I just it. got one too, and I haven't put the doors on yet. Because yeah, so it said I can't trailer with it, so I just took the the door off. Oh, you for can't the trailer. trailer. It says it says not to trailer with it. It says not to. But I can't see where where it's gonna go if I do. If like you can it's, go 110 down the road. I know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I might try it, but maybe in the summer. Cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it should be a good time. We'll see how your tires do on the rock, actually. How did they do last time? Uh, they're not the best. They're, they're not, not the best. best. Yeah, so that's why I said I just, I make it not mud specific, but mud. We capable. got winches. Yeah, yeah. When in doubt, pull the winch out. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're today. Yeah, the cottage was awesome, dude. Yeah. It's like luxury. Yeah. <laughs> Great luxury. <laughs> yeah. What a cool setup that is. Right? Yeah. yeah. You get to ride on top. Well, I like it on top, right? <laughs> only, only because hey, the dirt. Hey. The dirt. No, down. when you're, if I it's stay down there, because I got no oh, windows. Oh, yeah, the soul of the gets, crap. Yeah, I yeah, get yeah, covered. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, no, 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 no. We got to change this around. Gotcha. Because Frank detailed it. Then when we got up to the cottage, it was a mess. Because yeah, the, all the here, salt right? and stuff now too, right? Yeah. It's just, it keep sucks. Up. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Okay. You're gonna rate your pain. So you gotta get the truck from this way, huh? 12 point turn. Hi. 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 Wow. My old sled suited is too cold to wear. You can do the rents on this? Yeah, I'm, we're bundled up too. Yeah, this is my old snowmobile suit. You stay warm, you, know you stay Let's happy. Freaking hibernation. This thing's cool. Exactly. I'm the chicken skin. I got some chicken skin. I need to wear my, my bigger one. This is how we do it. <laughs> this is the old man's way of doing it. <laughs> that is so cool. Hey there, and thanks for tuning in to another video, guys. We are picking up where we left off in part one, so if you haven't checked it out yet, then head on over to the channel and watch part one. We got the happy hippie unload in here. This thing is sweet. He's got a wicked setup um, with that hydraulic lift right there. We got a really good mix of guys out today. We got a really good crew with a really nice, positive energy. I know we're gonna have a lot of fun. There is a ton of action in store in this video for you. That is too easy. Babe, 
you want to get in? Yeah. It's not cool. Yeah, it's actually really easy. I can see why you want something solid though, because those wheels are probably big in. Yeah, I mean, you could see the flex in the aluminum yeah, even. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like on the border of. Yeah, this rolled up, so that's just the truck can take it too, though, right? Like it, the it's suspension didn't even aluminum. move. The whole thing's aluminum. That's all aluminum. Yeah. Oh. It's all aluminum. That makes sense. Yeah. Lighter. Much lighter, yeah. About forty percent, I think. I gotta buy that new H. Uh, Oh, like the gated shifter? Yeah. yeah. So this way I'm in Oops. low and yet. reverse. Yeah, I gotta get those you one are the of those. Two, yeah. Those are the two you wanna always, you know what I mean? It'll save your ass if you're going Absolutely. over. Absolutely, hit it and, in reverse, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been wanting one of those for ages. And then I wanna get an inclometer or whatever you call it. Inclinometer like in the old Jeeps. Yeah, yeah. I don't wanna tip over. Yeah. <laughs> they don't stop you from tipping over, they just let you know how When you're about to. <laughs> As I mentioned, we've got a really awesome adventure heading your way today. This ride is gonna be a ton of fun. There's gonna be loads of action and quite a bit of carnage from various machines. So stay tuned, you will not be bored through this ride. Aside from a wide range of machines, we've also got a good group of friends. There's tons of positive energy and we're just gonna go out there and make the best of the day. It's gonna be awesome. Some rides you go out there and the energy is just great. This was one of those rides. I really feel like this is going to be one of the most enjoyable videos that I've made to date. And I hope you guys think the same. As always, make sure you leave a comment and let us know what you thought and smash that thumbs up button. Yeah, no, 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 this did, this did oh, Isn't that oh, sweet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This contraption, wow. Fish! How you doing? No, no, that's not fish. That's corny. Corny. Nice corny. to meet you. Hi, how you doing, buddy? I know you too. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard about you. Well Pretty cool looking. How's it going, Frank? I know you. Yeah. <laughs> I knew him too. Yeah. Where's your uh, Oh, let's go do it. We'll be back. We got a bent rim here, as you can probably see, and the bead's leaking. It's not holding the air very good off uh, Jason's X3. So they're gonna break the bead and clean it up and hopefully we can get it to kind of hold air. We got a compressor in case it leaks slowly, but um, we just want to get it to hold air better. He's got the socket. Yeah. Cool. Got the bead buster. Bead buster. Yeah. We're gonna bust some bead. You just go like this. Get this thing under there. Work. Bead Buster is an awesome tool to have in your gear kit. It makes easy work of tire beads. If you need more info on this product, then check out the video I made on the channel. Are you going to change the rings? How are you doing? No, it's just because it leaked around the outside of the rim. So it's probably got some dirt or something in it. You want to grab a bottle of water off the trailer there? I think there's two sitting there. That thing's awesome. Yeah, it makes you it's like easy. Our hopes here were to clean the bead sealing surface and hopefully fix the leak or at least slow it down to the point where we could deal with it throughout the day. That thing's awesome. I need one of them. They're not expensive. They're no? made in the US, yeah. It's called Bead Buster. Sweet. Let's clean it up. Clean it up. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of dirt and shit around that. And then we'll spray it with some soap. So the guys at Bead Buster sent me this, and I'm like, I'm gonna put that in my kit because I know I'm gonna need it. Yeah. And that was like two weeks ago, and now I need it. Yeah. I use it to swap my rims over actually at home because I don't have a tire machine. And the bead locks mm. are easy. What? Yeah, I like to all sketch. Still fixing stuff, eh? Carson, what are you doing right now? Sorry? What are you doing? Oh, Looks, yeah. like... <laughs> Somebody, I gotta get to Looks like you're fixing stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> no, upgrading, upgrading. It never ends, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're just sealing a bead. We've oh, bent. Right. Uh, we bent the rim. Big air compressor right there. 
Like oh, inside right there? Inside of the garage. Is that roll, roll right there? Is it unlocked? No, like right Oh, that roll, it's on? Yeah, that's always there there. Oh, right. it's good to know. That's good to know. You didn't know that you were going to No. no. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's right there. <laughs> Thanks. Well, we'll see if that holds. Let's go use the compressor. Yeah, might as well, right? <laughs> I think it should be good. I'm hoping that's so. That's not a big enough bend. I just noticed that if I put a lot of pressure in it, it would hold. Yeah, so it should be fine. It's probably just debris. Oh, cool, it works, doesn't it? Yeah, I knew this thing would come in handy. What's going on, guys? We're good. Let's fill her up with regular. Regular. Look at that fish. Dude, you haven't looked this respect. Well, I don't think I've ever looked this I'm clean today. You're wearing a suit. Now, for the first five minutes of the day, I'll be clean. That's a redneck suit right there, if I've ever seen one. Yeah. We're all matching now. It's like our riding uniform. Right? <laughs> like Fish it. is going to go take the, the, the initial ride to see if things don't shake apart. The test run after a four and a half hour drive. Ooh. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, man. So is Super ATV because it's on video now. <laughs> don't let him down, guys. Don't let him down. There we there go. go. Nice. You got both? Love that sound. Is that both of them? Or is the bottom? Oh no, the bottom's still seat, right? Yeah. Bottom seat. Looks like it. Doesn't look like it's leaking so far. Adrenaline junkie mechanic right here. I'm the jack of all trades. Master of none. <laughs> I think we have more air than we need. Well, let's uh... I don't think it's leaking to the point where we gotta worry about it today. Oh no, it's still leaking. Is it? I might have to run a crappy Wait, hold tire. On. It's not leaking from the bead though, I don't think. Is it leaking from the valve? See bubbles around the bead or no? I don't see anything. Go on your side. Where that uh, you're is. a leak. It's not the valve. Go spray it down with some soap. Here. Cause we got, go grab the tire, it's good. And then um, spray it down with the soap bottle. Oh, that was funny. Which one? Oh, and she was running, almost she on the face plant. She was running, almost did a face plant. <laughs> oh. I don't know if we were watching one the other day. <laughs> you almost Damn did it, a face plant. Did. Hey, we all get our turn. Oh yeah, I ain't doing no face plant. <laughs> no way. Yes. Nobody runs like, much How's it feel? Feels, feels okay so you can far. night and day difference oh, yeah. yeah i just went around and over those rocks i went like 15k faster than usual and it, and it wasn't, wasn't like this and it was like senny and i were talking we're like fish is gonna have to relearn how to drive that thing <laughs> it, it's like a brand new machine right now aren't you stoked I am. this is what you've been working towards for like two seasons how's well, the mainly, shocks feel yeah shocks yeah do the shocks feel good yeah nice new helmet yeah yeah matches your gear yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that guy was going to go around. That didn't work. Hey, how you doing? Good. This thing's, that's not a 900S. No, I didn't have a 900S. I had a 1000S. Oh. That last time you were out was a 1000S? 1000S, yeah. Is this your new machine? Yeah. These are fun. Yeah. We got some more Articat representation. <laughs> ready to rock? Hi. You ready? This is gonna be like we got the we got quite a mix here. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah. You're ready to go. You're like oh, yeah, it's you got heat in there? No heat. Did you pull the back vent? Not yet because uh, water does come in there and it's and it seems up my window. Oh yeah, so yeah. But I'm a lot of heat comes out of there. Yeah, yeah. I'll open it if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna roll in a minute. Yeah, yeah, but I want the next step. Look at this, Team Fin Trail. Woo! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> You're different. Yeah. You don't fit in. One of these don't belong. <laughs> One of these suits ain't like the other. <laughs> All right, all right, guys. So we're all loaded up. We got all the machines pretty much lined up here, and uh, you'll see a better look of them on the trail. But we're gonna hit the trail now, and uh, we'll pick up with you when we get to Greens Mount. Let's roll. Go catch up.
good then? You're good if we go? Okay. We're gonna leave them, let's go. Unfortunately, Jason's machine is still having issues. The tire went flat and on top of that, it started to overheat. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that most of the core crew is very prepared. We maintenance our machines religiously and we're always ready for the rides. Uh, sometimes things don't work out though. All right, so we finished our 20 minute road burn. The tire issue and the overheating issue Jason was having is not a new thing. He should have addressed that before coming on this ride. You would have seen it occurring in the previous video as well. So as a result, we can't ruin the ride for everyone. Sean and Jason stayed back and made their way to camp and we kept going. Yeah, we are long enough. Realistically, things worked out for the best because the breakdown happened about five minutes from camp, so they easily doubled back. Um, here we're getting to the bottom of Green's Mountain. You see Tim hitting it first, and uh, the fun is about to begin. Uh, you also see me struggling with the issues of having a full windshield and no heat. And the fact that it's cold out and we're trying to keep up with the GoPro battery changes. It's uh, not easy trying to balance all this and ride. Here you see me and Ksenia having a nice loving and caring conversation over the cameras. Dip is amazing. You amazing. I love that. <laughs> that crawled me. That with the clutch set up, I am amazed right now. I am Excited. stoked. Oh man. You look like you were just in your happy place for that climb. Dude, you're did like, you see that? It was just like bloop. You didn't panic at all because you were like, is the wheel gonna oh, yeah. slip this time or not? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well you did that spin every yeah, time. Really Having fun yet? Yeah. Always. Yeah. All right, so we made it to Greens Mountain again. This is gonna be the last trip on Greens Mountain for the season before they shut down December 1st for snowmobiling season until next spring. So it should be a good time. We got a really good group of mix of uh, machines. We've even got an Arctic Cat uh, XX, I guess it would be, but now it's called a Tracker, I think, an XTR or something like that. I don't even know. It'd be cool to see it go. Um, so yeah, we got a good mix of machines. We got fish out in the fish tank with the new front locking diff, so that should be a game changer compared. He's already, he's already so, uh -huh. commenting? Yeah, so that's good. 
cool. He's so excited. Yeah, I bet he is. This is going to be a real good test for him. Let's take a quick look at the lineup. We've got the Kawasaki Carex 1000. We've got the Polaris Razor 1000 High Lifter Edition. The Kawasaki is on 31 inch carnivores. Those are stock. The High Lifter looks like it's on a set of 30 inch Pro Armor crawlers on a beadlock. We got the R Max. The R Max looks like it's sitting on a stock set of carnivores here. I believe they're 30s. Over here, we've got the Polaris Turbo S sitting on a set of XT300s, I believe, from System 3 on fuel beadlocks. We've got the Tracker XTR1000, which looks like it's sitting on some Traxion um, Alpha tires. It's similar to like a mud terrain uh, and similar to the Crawler. I believe those are the stock tires that it comes on their 30s. We've got the Commander sitting on a set of 30. Uh, inch XTR 370s from System 3, uh, which are an excellent tire. You guys know we love those. All the System 3 tires work really well. Sitting on Can-Am beadlocks, and here we have a set of Pro Armor crawlers on Pro Armor beadlocks on the Pro XP. This part looks so different from summer. <sighs> All right, here we go. Let the real fun begin. We got me, and then we got Tim in the background. We got a camera on Fish's machine. Uh, we got a bunch of cameras. We'll have a ton of angles. It's gonna be a good time. You guys will see the differences between all these machines. It's always a ton of fun to have a mix of machines out like this because it really lets you see the pros, the cons, the strengths and the weaknesses of all the different platforms. I really enjoy filming the rides with a large variety of machines, and I know you guys really like watching them. Here comes the battle wagon. Hold on. Kawasaki and the Tracker have selectable front lockers, so here you saw that Corny's wasn't engaged, which is why only one of the front wheels was spinning. We are all super excited to see how the Tracker does. Um, none of us have, have seen one of these newer ones on the trail, so it's going to be really interesting. Like I mentioned earlier, it's got a selectable front locker, which obviously isn't on right now. front drive line engages on the various platforms as well as how the differences in suspension geometry affect them on these obstacles. Another big factor on trails like this is ground clearance and tire size.
and the lines you choose when traversing obstacles. already noticing the big difference in the front end on Fish's Commander here with the new front diff. Both front wheels are spinning, unlike that one wheel peel we're used to in this generation of Commander. a lot of fun to look at different tire designs, sizes, pressures, and see how they perform on the same obstacles. Oh, I'm definitely feeling the lack of rear sway bar.
your two wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. It's wild how big the difference between two and four wheel drive is. Fish with the new Swift track. What? Where's the one wheel peel? No more love. Fish is gonna be good now with that diff, eh? Dude, he's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and the new suspension, the new clutching. Uh-oh. I think the bar one. just got moved up again. <laughs> that thing I'd crawls, say it works. Eh? It works. That, that four by four is four by four now. Isn't it people. amazing what it is, four by four and a four by four? Well, the four by four I had, I thought it was four by four, but Super ATV picks my brow for me with true 4x4. Woo! Yeah! Oh, we got 4x4. 4x4. Hey, dude, you, you just... Hey, did you see it? Is it crawled up? Oh, up? yeah. Yeah, you just go like this. That, with the clutch side up right now and the Alphas, I am in, like, the Bro, main. you just kicked it up a notch. <laughs> oh, wow. The fish tank just stepped it up. 100%. Yeah, all you commander owners out there, you best be proud. Yep. Yeah, Your international OG commander representative has just stepped up the game. Yes. Killing it. Killing it. It is, dude. Killing it. Like, I can't believe, like, this thing just crawled. Like, that ledge that we started off with there just before the last break. Not even a tire spin. Yeah. But before, you had to, like, hit it. I had so to get, get I had to give it the momentum to try and yeah. get that fourth wheel turning. Now it's just, like, put in low and just bloop. Now you can crawl thing. It's like a true without crawler. hitting it. <laughs> true craw crawler in low. Yeah. And then how I got the clutch set up right now, highway, I float like that 66, 68 grand down the highway. Yeah. I am you know, doing like 80, no problem. And I was at like 72 half the time before I'm tired. Uh, right on, man. Cool. As you can see in here, Fish is pretty impressed with this Swift Track front diff from Super ATV. It's making a big difference on the machine. Uh, we all are quite impressed with how it's working so far. What?
wheel would have started spinning. trail starts in my books it does yep. yeah do you know that tim made it up this last week you were saying that over there then that means i gotta do he it he went far right there yeah and the 1000 s gave a valiant effort but <laughs> man tim's just like he gave it one shot and he made it up right that's there. so cool right there yeah oh yeah. there's an easier path down yeah you can go down this way remember the part i had trouble getting up last time right right here going down. going down it should be fine yeah he never waits If you watched the last video, you would have seen Tim make it up that multi-step ledge in the Arctic Kitty, and um, he set the bar, now everyone thinks they want to try it. So uh, one by one, we're going to hit this and see um, if we can clone Tim's line. Going down some of these obstacles can be sketchy if you're not used to this type of terrain, but usually once you've been down something or something similar, you kind of know how much grip there is and, and how steep of a grade you can do before your machine really gets sketchy. Um, with that being said, a lot of this terrain requires a lot of thought process because a, a slightly wrong move can put you in a really sticky situation. And when I'm filming with Ksenia, we're trying to get the best shots. We're trying to set the machine up in an area where like you get a good shot and a good angle. We're focusing on the camera gear, the crew. We have to think ahead where we're going, what we're filming, how the video is going to come together, changing batteries, all that stuff. It can really get overwhelming at times when you're trying to balance all this out as well as ride the technical terrain. With that being said, all the guys in the core crew over the last few seasons of filming have developed an understanding of the, the work that goes into this and the effort involved, and they're very patient. Corn is doing sketchy sh**. Do -da, do -da, do -da. Okay, I don't we're... know if it's a good thing that you brought on the big camera or not. I don't know, we'll find out. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sounds like you. Yeah. Let's see the Arctic Kitty do it again. Yeah. Well, different tires, different setup, and we got snow. So. Well, there was a bit of snow last time. Timmy and the Arctic Cat. Although a lot of these videos come together seeming like a movie because they're so long, my goal is never to make this feel like Hollywood or a production. This is my version of reality off-roading. This is real reality TV. I trim out some of the fat, but at the end of the day, you get the full experience. We show the good, we show the bad, we show you what it's really like out here. The goal has always been to make it feel like you're out here riding with us. Yeah, and look at that thing, eh? Yeah. Here we are dropping 50 grand on a machine, and look at him. Oh, yeah. Everybody's gonna own one of those after that. Yeah. The price of a wildcat just went up. Who's next? Fishy! Fishy, 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 fishy! He's thinking about it. You can see the smoke coming out of his ears. That's how you know he's serious. Here's Tim giving bad advice. Yeah, just do this and this and that. If you roll up, no, 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 it's no big deal. Not me. Yeah, your wheels lifted, man. Wheelies are cool. Yeah. Little pucker factor. Just, just a bit, eh? Are you trying that? I want you so badly, but I just wrenched off for two weeks. You can easily go. You can easily go down it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a stump there. I've just got to say that XTR 1000 sounds evil, especially at idle. I would love to hear that thing with an exhaust. Brian's going down. Brian Rays are coming down. I think the tracker is going to try it. He couldn't make it up in his 1000S last video, so he brought out the new machine. He's going to try in the Articat, or um, in the Textron, or in the tracker, whatever you want to call it. But these things are known to crawl quite well, so we'll see how it does. And he's not scared to try. Looks like he had a bit of three wheel.
real appeal going on there, Can Am style. Another excellent test for that new front diff. Well, we'll put the helmet on the floor. Swift track front diff you know, from Super A T V. Holy cow. <laughs> you know, Price the commander's just one up too, I think. It's your turn. <laughs> yeah, I want to so badly. Yeah, yeah. So this. Yeah, okay. We didn't start we just started. We got all kinds of places to play up here. It just keeps going up and up. Man, that diff is a game changer. Okay, let's go to the next hole. Hippies doesn't want to try this? Fish! Well done, my friend. I am super impressed right now myself. What a game changer. This thing is a tank. <laughs> the fish tank! Woo! Right? I can't go up it because this is the film spot. True. Good one. <laughs> I won't hit. Turn off. See, I've heard if you hit it real fast on the throttle, yeah. pull the front tires <laughs> up, you'll just pop to the bottom. Disneyland's pretty expensive. It is. Brakes. I hope he has brakes because he ain't making it down the other side. 
We'll find out. Oh, Miss Hippie. She's thinking about it. Miss Hippie's thinking about it. Thinking about it. Oh, she's doing it. Oh, yes. It's actually really easy going down. It you is. just gotta ride the brakes. Just when you get to that second step. Hold the wheels straight and ride the brakes. Happy Hippie's doing it too. She's doing really well out here. She put too much of an angle, but it's fine. She'll be fine. Forward now. Hold your brakes. Yeah. He's coming down. Just that trailer queen left there now. <laughs> yeah, it looks great just sitting there on the trail, eh? It does. That's what I built it for. <laughs> oh, the uh, the Textron slept there too. I think crawl is really good. They're known to, to crawl, yeah. yeah. That three cylinder, I love the three cylinder. Is that a three cylinder? Yeah. Is it a Yamaha? I'm not sure. We should ask Textron Timmy. XTR. It's a tra tracker. I know the X was a twin. Double X. Is it a twin? I thought it was a twin. Oh no, that's a three cylinder. That's okay. the double X, so that's probably the triple. So that cool. is the triple. That's cool. It's got a nice idle. It's got the three-wheel peel going on, though. He does, yeah. Does he have a locker? He does have a dip locker. Okay. <laughs> that generation of Can-Ams, they all squealed. It's too easy now. It is. Here, let's take one of your axles out. <laughs> Amazing, eh? Yeah. You did so good. Right? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I was like this gonna get out. Did Adrenaline you rush. It was first time? Yep, that like that, yeah. <laughs> I'd never do that. <laughs> well maybe I will. Peace, love, and hey, we can have babies, we can do anything. 
has a cream trail. It is good, warm, cozy. It's pretty. Happy over here. It. Damn pretty, yes. This is a crazy climb when it's wet. with experience right exactly, yeah. yeah you got to wreck a few things before you can figure it out i'm sure we can both say we've wrecked a few things <laughs> i drive a cow sexy nothing wrecks done all this in three-wheel drive gimpy did in the 900 yes yeah. but i mean obviously once again gimpy is, uh, gimpy is gimpy. a good wheel man he's a good wheel man he's a driver oh. you're good now let's see the r
That's going, it's going. Once that rear wheel lets go. Oh, because there's a little lip here. You're, you're uh, grabbing here. Lip here. Oh, there a lip there? I guess there's things we can't see going on. Forward. There we go, there we go. Once it gets You're mucked up, the, the earlier you go, the easier it is. Because all those little dry sections where you could dry, grab some grip before, they're all gone now. True test of that dip. Here comes the four wheel drive commander. It's a Polaris dip 
the sprag skip. Oh, the, the flare yeah. crunch? Yeah. No. No, that doesn't sound bad. Something's nice. wrong. This fish mad. <laughs> oh, you paint. That's where it marked the paint up last time on that rail. Yep, same spot. <laughs> you got more paint this time. That made me pucker up. That is disappointing. I know. I he just cry. swapped two discs. That's definitely disappointing guys. Um, fish is super bummed out. We're all a little surprised that the diff failed so quickly. A um, little bit of background. I've talked to Super ATV, sent them these videos, and they pretty much said, hey, sometimes things don't work out, sometimes things break. Um, once the diff's out, they want to take a look at it, make sure they can diagnose the issue. And um, they said, post the video, show people what it's like. We, it's not always a home run. They said, we got nothing to hide. Uh, some products work better than others, but the goal is always to, to learn from these experiences so that in the future they can perfect their designs.
Yeah. Well, I tried that like nine times the one day. <laughs> Where did you get? To the top. But boy, did my diff sound like yours going up. Let's see. I did that one on the first try, so. You don't know if you don't try. Tim, you're a legend. Woo! You can do it! I believe in you. <laughs> Which way should I go? slipping you started adding more throttle and it just yeah. sped everything up because i knew i couldn't let off if nope. i let off i'm sideways done i'm glad there was a door for you yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm, i was just hoping don't hit it, that guy and don't <laughs> smash into this rock yeah yep. it all worked out this time is he coming for us Don't get sideways on a nope. hill. Sideways bad. Sideways very bad. Don't stay sideways. Go. Back up a little bit. 
He can go up it now. That happened to me the first time I went up. Stop. Get me there. Now turn this way. Put one on the brake and one on the gas. built in on top and the rear tail lights built into the top. It's one of my favorite groups. Can you get around me? No, Julian, you have to move. What? You have to move.
been doing pretty good. She's only got two wheel drive though. Since Miss Hippie isn't waterproof, I figured I'd jump in and help her out so she doesn't get wet. You want me to put it up there? There's some Jeeps coming. As soon as you lose your four-wheel drive, things get difficult out here. It's insane how much difference there is when you lose the pull of those front wheels. So luckily there's a winch to help us out. We got some traffic here. We do, we got some jeeps. Yeah. They're going that way. Oh yeah? Yeah. This one's about to get stuck. I don't know how people think it's okay to go wheeling and train like this without a winch. Here we got some jeeps and when you look at these and, and, and you compare them to the side-by-sides, you can see the differences right away. What a different experience. Crazy. the trail it's smooth sailing huh? once we're off the trail it's smooth yeah, sailing yeah but how much more far over we're going so um, we're off the trail right a little while and then we got to go all the way back off the trail no no we'll get to the end and you'll be able to you'll be it'll, it'll get to the top and then it's downhill there's no sense of you doubling back here that'd be craziness
No! That silt in there is brutal. It's bottomless. Say these quick clips uh, I see what they're doing here it's a good idea in theory but they don't seem to hold tight enough and I don't know if this thing got water in through the exhaust on top or the intake or through the case itself but it's a silly design not having a drain plug on there that's what I was saying the uh, keep right keep right keep right keep right you went left that's like up to here yeah. <laughs> they're on maybe you pop it into neutral and uh, yeah. let it idle yeah. it up a bit what there's no belt no drain? No drain, you gotta pop the quick clips. Oh, that's dumb. But all that's holding it on is those quick clips. I bet they're not holding tight enough. It clawed its way out of there, man. I can't believe that. I didn't think it was gonna move like that. We need a standard tip screwdriver to pop the clip. You good getting in there? Or you need a boost? He got it. He's been a drain already. Yeah, we got drain. Just trying it out. way we're going right well, I'm actually gonna hard line. me too oh yeah you're that's really what cool i mean you know which way flip? we're going what where greg flipped is that where he flipped yeah oh well then between the spiky boulder and the other boulder <laughs> man always an eventful ride you never know what's coming around the corner it makes you fall down right about there Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah. Twisted my ankle on it. It's a freaking fall. Thanks for the warning. Would have been funnier if you didn't oh, tell me. Look at this. You think it's cheap, but it's not. I've mentioned this in previous videos at Greens Mountain and it's just awesome. This trail system is so much fun because there's so many various lines you can take down this trail. Oh. My boots are wet. My boots yeah, are wet too. too. But my feet aren't. Nope. The thing is though, yeah, I just weird? explained them how, how you get like the water bubbles like pockets in there. Underneath your feet, yeah, it's hydro massage. It's like weird. <laughs> it's, it's like very a water weird. bed. It's like a water bed for your feet. Yeah, baby. Today's tip, keep to the right. Yeah. Are Walk you hitting that way? Up into the right, probably. <laughs> Me too.
this is definitely one of our favorite obstacles here, so we're all itching to hit it. It's it's different every time. These trails evolve so much based on the time of year and the weather conditions. you that way because you got your wheel in that hole yeah and yeah, i went that so way take your, sideways almost whoop. yep take passenger wheel over on that side and we're more slick this time than we were last time yeah, yeah. but you saw the way that that brian made it up with those mud tires i know he just yeah. crawled it that was awesome you can still see his tire marks up there yep yeah you know there's some dry sections you might be able to hook some grip I think on the last climb, you gave it a little too much yeah. wheel spin. And then it started getting squirrely. You completely lost traction. Yeah, and then I knew when I got sideways, I'm like, I can't stop But you sideways. made a new line. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> the boss says go, you go. All right, let's go. This way. It almost tried to grab there. It did. I should have kept on. Yeah, on yeah. There. Getting deja vu. Yeah. Where's he going? I believe he's going to take the two wheel drive option. It might work out for him without the wheel. Stick to the right. Stick to the right. <laughs> Pay attention to the front wheels here. You can see they're still spinning a bit out of that diff. This is the last time that diff did anything. Yeah! That's how it's done. I, I'm, bu I'm bummed out about that diff. Yeah. I first real obstacle and it popped. Yeah, first. Yeah, first obstacle. That's upsetting. So, we gonna draw a straw? I'm gonna go. You want to film? I will. From down there? Yep. Here, I'm going to dip my water bottle. My turn. Let's see how the battle wagon does. This is another good test for the Tusk Megabytes. We'll see if they hook up better or worse than the Max's Carnivores here. What's the battle wagon going to do here?
Silver can. What? Where's Dan? It's in there. Let's see if Timmy can do it. I mean, come on. We all know Timmy never disappoints. Give her hell, buddy. That I'll line that, part up when I get there. that line I took seemed real grippy and good. Yeah. I crawled up there nice. Yeah, I've gone that way before. Oh, you want to wanna switch it up. Unreal. Internet, come on, what the heck? <laughs> Wild. I'm trading my cow is sexy in for one of those. He's the bang for buck, he's winning. He is winning. He doesn't even have tires. Oh. Bald 27s. He's recycling. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Look at that sweet fin trail Susie's rocking. Oh, yeah. Sexy. Is it comfy? It is absolutely comfy. Yeah. Trade my couch. You need some pink laces. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's the next one thing. Pink laces. Leave it to Tim to take the line less traveled. I mean, this guy is not a follower. That's a fact. He is a trendsetter. Bumping the bar up a notch like usual. Looks like one of the two two-wheel drive machines are getting some help up here. We'll see how Fish does in two-wheel drive over on this obstacle. It's cool that we've finally been able to go out with a Tracker XTR XX, which is the same thing as the Articat XX. They're identical, just different badging. It's always fun to throw a new machine into the mix with the rest of the crew. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about why we don't have a Honda Talon. Unfortunately, we have what the guys buy and Honda has really failed the Canadian market when it comes to the side-by-side -side division. They didn't supply the stock, the model range, and the price point to make those vehicles attractive and attainable. They're not a machine you see very often in our area. I'm hoping that this season, with the popularity of the channel continually growing, when we organize some group rides, hopefully we can get a wider range of machines out, including a Talon, maybe some more Arctic Cats. It would be great to get a General out on the trails, an RS1, and see some of those machines in action with the rest of the crew. If you don't already follow us on Instagram and on Facebook, then I suggest you do, because that's where we will be posting all the info on group rides and stuff like that.
you can see Fish is getting frustrated here. It really blows when your machine lets you down early into the ride, or when you've just done a bunch of work to it. It's frustrating, it sucks. I mean, sometimes it's part of the game, unfortunately. You just gotta kinda deal with it. You can hear fish saying there in the previous clip no one's helping and i mean yeah we let him down here we should have been helping him hook up the winch he's struggling here he's got two-wheel drive uh we're either in front of him or behind him there messing around having fun where we should be helping him because he's down Well, I guess that's karma kicking me in the ass for not lending a hand. Sometimes I get really caught up filming and, and keeping track of the ride and the cameras, um, and it's easy to get sidetracked. Um, Fish is always there, first guy to help when something happens. Um, so in this situation, we should have been there to repay the favor. Um, I mean, it's no one does it on purpose, um, but hey, it is what it is. When we're wrong, we're wrong, and you know, when you do, when you mess up, you got to take ownership for it. It's easy to get demoralized when you're breaking down and everyone else is out having a blast pushing the limit and you're struggling to kind of take the easy route. Whoa! One more click. Okay. Might get buyer's remorse. Should have just spent 10 grand and bought an Arctic yeah. Kitty. A little bit of a plug here, guys. Make sure you check out the Shopify store. We got a load of wicked stickers on the Shopify store, tons of cool designs, and also a ton of new swag. There's a bunch of new t-shirt designs in various sizes and colors. We're well stocked up now, finally, coming into the spring and the summer. So if you want to help support the channel, you want some cool Team AJP gear, make sure you check out our Shopify store. The link is in the description of all the videos. Also, don't forget, we've got a sweet giveaway lined up for you in this video. We're going to be giving away a full set of fin trail riding gear. That includes the boots, the waders, and the jacket. So stay tuned to the end of the video for details on how to enter for your chance to win some of the best riding gear out there. We're coming up to another gnarly obstacle here. This drop is pretty steep, and uh, usually when people come here for the first time and see it, they're a little concerned.
taking my usual line over there. I can't believe they made it up this. Pucker there. Is there a bypass, Tim? Uh, no. We should have gone the other way and come up yeah. that face, and you can bypass yeah, there's it. There's a way all the way around that way. You know when we came up the, the, the steep one? No. We got to go back to where we were all playing on that big rock. Yeah. From that way over there, it goes like yeah. further around. Ah. Yeah, it's no problem going down. Do you want me to drive it down? I'm Frank's driving it. Frank's driving it, okay. He's okay with it. All right, hop in. Are you going to go down? I got no choice. Yeah. Do I? If everybody else is going, I don't have to Here's a bridge, a, jump. But a everybody else is jumping. Right. <laughs> Pretty There's much. no other way around. Just backtracking, yeah. Backpedal, but then you have to go up another slippery slope, so. Pick and choose your battles. This yeah. hill looks a lot worse that than it is. Get out of the way. Why don't you? Why don't that trail go to? I don't know. <laughs> if you guys move, yeah, hey, if you move forward, I'll go first, and then that way we can see. Yeah. I'm gonna go down first then. That way they can see it. It's not as bad as it. It, it looks bad. It does it's look not. bad. Yeah. We also have a twisted, deranged sense of normal. Fine, that's fine. That's easy, that's easy. That's a two out of ten, man. <laughs> Back up and straighten it out. Just stay on this side of the tree. Just on this side. Straighten her out. Slow and steady. The Razor has a better departure angle and an approach angle. The R Max, that was a weak spot. Its bumper sticks out a bit, right? That's why it hit. Yep. This thing's wheels stick out tons. You'll have no problem. Oh, yeah. You can could, you could climb a vertical with all of that thing. But at the same time, his departure angle is a little... See, his, his ass sticks out past the wheels? Because of the box. Yeah. But that's pretty high up, though. Yeah, and it's got a nice angle to it, right? Yeah. It's a wild to fire, eh? Yeah. I'm still not sold on those. Yeah. They're cool it's machines. It's working well, though. Yeah, it's working really well, actually. It's, uh, I've never seen one in the XTR trim like that. Oh my, oh my god, it's 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 22 a, hollow point. It's an ammunition. Ammunition. Ammo. Woohoo! Pew 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 pew. There you go. There you go. That that approach angle he's got is awesome for that. Yeah. Yeah. How about the hippie? Uh, so yeah, just stick close to that tree. Tell them to ride the brakes now. Ride the brakes.
I need to coach Julian on how to go down. Her up.
here's Tim coming up to try another gnarly obstacle. A bunch of guys have tried this climb. It's actually pretty hard. Um, we'll see how the Arctic Cat does. I mean, there's not much he can't conquer. Still think he can't drive? Oh. Like, come on, guys! Like, open what your eyes. That? That's definitely not just the machine doing the work. No, no, no. He knows what he's doing. There's all these people online being like, "He does that guy on the other kid. I don't know how to drive. He can't even hit the throttle." Well, he's been schooling us all every single yeah, ride, <laughs> dude. That was that was scary. I tried that before and I didn't have the Fair luck. On. Because my tire pressures were too high. That was insane in the membrane. Hey, our food's gonna be ready here in a little bit. Well, let's we're make it past this obstacle. Okay. We're literally almost at the top. But... I tried this once, it does not work. Oh. I tipped, it, I was tipping over. <laughs> Me? What? Should I go? Yeah. Okay. Do it. Hold on. Because you get jammed in here later. Which way? Go right there. That's a bad idea, but okay. <laughs> Told you it's a bad idea. You've got like no air pressure. Do you want me to stand on this side? Yeah, that'd be great. Where do I stand? been here for like 18 million years. Bring it on. <laughs> Your uh, light broke off. Your reverse light. It's dangling. It's okay.
broke too. Broke, broke. Whoa, pull it. What happened? No, no. I thought it was a broken arm, but it's a broken stick. Just be careful. You're teetering on like a big, nasty rock. Okay, You're hung up good. You got, whoa, you got it. You're good, you're good, you're good. Go back, go back. I broke the rock. He broke the rock. This guy is an animal. That thing is awesome. I can smell our full pork. Dinner's ready. I went to the right. Yeah, this is... I went through here. Turn very good. Tim went right through the middle. Everyone else is rushing ahead. Sometimes the riding's a little slower when you're filming and people don't realize that when they come out. It's a different kind of ride when you're out trying to shoot and film and get multiple camera angles and multiple vehicles. Um, you can't move as quick. You soft a lot more. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. It's the way it is. What you see on the camera is a really filtered, exciting version of what's actually happening because we trim all the fat and there's a lot of fat. If this was ground beef, it would be extra, extra fatty. Oh, did you end up popping the bead? No. What happened? Pop a tire? Big pop beat? It's on. The beat didn't pop? No. It just You might have let it out and then You might have hit it, yeah. Yeah. Man, but I think that's got a lot to do with why you're doing so well. You're I dropped the pressures right now. Yeah, your tires are like bubble gum and like just conforming to everything. Yeah. Man, this thing is insane. It the works most so underrated well. machine in the on the market. Yeah, it is it works so well. It is definitely underrated. It's like riding a BMX bike, you can just do crazy Oh, dude, it's unreal. It just takes it, eh? Yeah, I mean, you're a lot of fun to watch ride. Right? I scared not myself scared. a few times. Yeah, right? that must take a lot. Fear is what keeps me right side up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you um, you really push the bar, dude. You never go around. I mean, you, make, you put us all to shame. <laughs> I like a challenge. The General Lee. The Dukes of Hazard would be proud. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we are. We made it to the top of Greens Mountain. This is uh, kind of like a pinnacle moment of the ride because now we start our descent down the other side of the mountain and essentially the ride back to camp begins. Uh, we won't be heading back anytime soon, but uh, this is kind of the start of our trek back now. So we're gonna have a bite to eat before we go. If I get a shot of Corny's cuisine. <laughs> Five star trail side eating. Whoa, look fun. at that. What do you got there? <laughs> you got the it got a little pork. juicy in the container, got shook up. A pulled pork. pork. Buttered hearts. That's Check this out. If I get this open. 
It is, right? Is that airplane food? Yeah. No, this is homemade pulled pork. Nice packaging. Thank you, thank you. Corny. Yeah. The KRX awesome. kitchen. Got the muff pot out. Got one more. We got the muff pot. This one's not as warm because I had two of them stacked and the heat comes from the bottom. We got hot dogs in here. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. What's that? What? Hot dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go to the other hot dog stand. Dying for hot dogs. He's like the other hot dog stand's got hot. Finally he gets one. <laughs> oh yeah, these are warm. That's what he gets for giving his opinion, right? Yeah. It's hard to beat a good trailside buffet like this. Food just tastes better when you're out on the trail with all your friends riding. If you can stay warm, dry, and fed on the trail, then you're living the off-road dream. What's not to love about this lifestyle? I wouldn't have it any other way. This R-Max is handy. Mm -hmm. I just thought about that in your voice. Yeah, dig yeah, in, don't be shy. You got a lot for everyone. Yeah, a lot oh, of food. Help yourself. Hot dogs? Tube steaks? <laughs> Tube steaks? Is that what you said? Yeah. He means cock. <laughs> oh, oh no, you're not getting none of that. <laughs> what happens off camera? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants hot dogs? Dig in. They're gonna get cold. Two. The way porn hugs pain these days. Side by side parts. Hold on, do you want to catch them? Right? They are. <laughs> Christine, do you want hot dog? Okay. You see my ass on there? You just keep going. You just keep throwing. Hot dog? Appreciate it. Like you want a message, Susie? A little bit. Who wants a hot dog? Not a lot. Hot dog? Hot dog? Oh, hot dog? Well, maybe the big. Hot dog? Hot dog? Hot dog? Hot dog? We need some service. We're gonna get cold. <laughs> Dig in. Get up the middle, bro. We got ketchup and mustard. No, not yet. <laughs> Susie? Now you gotta figure a steamer out for the... Uh, yeah! <laughs> We tried to steam hot dog today. But, but all the water happen. leaked out. <laughs> All righty, so uh, we are all fed. We got our calories in us. Everyone's nice and warm and ready to hit the trail again. We're all energized and ready to head down Greens Mountain, and there's still a lot of adventure ahead of us. There's a few more unexpected events that are going to pop up along the way, and a little bit more carnage uh, that you guys might not expect coming. So stay tuned, it's going to be awesome. The ride only gets better. Make sure you enter our Fin Trail giveaway for your chance to win some awesome Fin Trail gear. We'll have all the information on what you need to do at the end of the video. Big shout out to our supporters at Fin Trail for making this giveaway possible. If you'd like to help support the YouTube channel, then make sure you use our affiliate link through our sponsors at Rocky Mountain ATV MC. That link is available at the top of every video description. And also check out our Shopify store. We just added some wicked new swag designs, new shirts, sweaters, stickers, all that stuff up on the Shopify Shopify store, check it out. As you know, creating this content requires a lot of time and resources, so all the proceeds go directly back into the channel to make more content for you guys to enjoy.
This train of side-by-sides cruising down the trail here looks awesome. Uh, this is such a cool scenic spot and a really nice shot. It's really cool to see all these different machines lined up hitting these obstacles. I really love creating content like this and when a video comes together like this one did then um, it's just it's so much fun uh, from the ride itself to filming the content to producing it and uploading it and then reading everybody's comments and, and watching the finished product it's just an awesome time. What makes it extra special too is how many people all over the world enjoy this content and I'm able to share it all with you guys through the internet through YouTube and, and that really is awesome. I've mentioned it before, but I want to say thanks for dedicating your time, your free time to watching this content and supporting the channel because it really has given me an awesome outlet for my creativity over the years and I couldn't have accomplished this without you guys.
if you can really see it on a video. Maybe on this new GoPro 10 fancy camera you can. But that's a wild climb or decline or it's just an awesome trail. We've had so much fun out on Greens Mountain this season. It's been such a blast. I think we got you some really good video this season from Greens. Looks so different. With the leaves gone. Yeah, you can't see this when the leaves are there. It just looks like a tunnel. The water's flowing down the trail. Same trail. Okay, the big camera is away and we are pretty much at the bottom of Greens Mountain now, so uh, the game plan would be to just kind of cruise back. I mean, at, at this point, the, the trail is pretty much just smooth sailing and there shouldn't be many issues, but we all know things don't always go according to plan when we get together. There's our trusty camera girl running to get the shot again. I always laugh and say this is the redneck workout and she doesn't have to go to the gym, all she's got to do is come riding with me. Judging by her expression, the GoPro is not working. <laughs> Nothing new there, as the temperature drops into the evening, things like this become more frequent. Nothing's turning on. Here, this one works. Luckily, we've got a few extra GoPros on hand at all times. I usually bring five or six at least. We got Brian buried here. I guess he thought his machine was looking too clean for the end of the ride, so we finished her off. I just, wait. I just turned this way so I can see. Yeah, we got a good seat. I think it'll be a few minutes before he's out. Everyone is unstuck and we are ready to head for the road. Um, basically, we'll be taking the back way home, taking the trails. So uh, it's a mix of open trail like this and a bit of gravel road riding until we get to the end and we hit the paved road. Uh, so it shouldn't be too much as far as trail obstacles are concerned at this point, but there's still a little bit of interesting stuff in store for you. Arnie in front of us here in the tracker owned a Articat dealership for 30 years before he retired. So he's got a lot of experience working on Articats, um, on the sleds and on the ATVs. Uh, but I do know he's a big sled head. He said he picked up this Articat, or tracker as it's called now, from a local Bass Pro shop because it'd been sitting around for quite a while and they were having trouble selling it. He said he got a pretty good deal on it. And so far it's been working real good today. What kind of experiences have you guys had with these models? Um, as you know, we don't see these trackers or XX model Articats very often in our neck of the woods. So the street low oil pressure and uh, overheating. So we gotta figure out what's going on and just quit here. 
you guys know I love busting chops when it comes to Can-Am, but boy, oh boy, do I have a sweet spot for the Arctic Cat chop busting too. Um, <laughs> it was working good, keyword was. We saw like rainbow, but we assumed it was from the broken oh, TV joint. As we saw some rainbow like drops here and there oh, yeah. when we saw. So I don't know, if, it wasn't like insane or anything, but now you're telling me you got low oil pressure, so I'm wondering if what, the, what we saw was maybe a, an oil drip. Well, if I'd have a lot of oil, it should be oily down here, right? I mean, we just hit a lot of water, right? The oil? I can I can smell the year earlier when we stopped. I, could, I, I knew somebody was burning something. Where's the smell. oil dipstick on this thing? I'm looking for it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. So I, I'm, I've been looking for it too, and I'm, is it, I don't even know where to start on one. Yeah, there's some quick clips on the bed. You said, yeah, can you shine some light in here? Thanks. Let's get the bed off. Oh, I thought those were like game bugs. They just unthread. Yep, there's one. Ball busting set aside. We got a problem here, so we gotta all get together and fix it. Um, Arnie's first time riding this thing really is today, so we don't know too much about this machine. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. That's actually pretty easy access. I held the flashlight for my dad. How, how many times did you get yelled at to begin with here? Hold on. I've still got scars. <laughs> what if that's dipstick right, right there? there. Right. That's what I'm thinking that's myself. Weird. Give it a good. Oh, it's loose. Oh, uh, that's not the dipstick. No, that's the fill. No. The dipstick's going to be lower. So yeah, that's that's really low oil power. pressure and oh. overheat. Lost power. shiny but it's also a brand new engine right yeah i think we have oil i mean i think i think you've got oil oh yeah so it must be hot yeah it's probably just in limp mode or it's running super hot that muck you were in might have plugged up the rack <laughs> yeah it's definitely got oil How, how is he reading for oil? Yeah. About three quarters worth up to where it should be. Oh. He's not low. We thought he might be. I was gonna say I, I am carrying some oil, but in that case. No, no, I think the oil situation's okay. Yeah. Why don't we rinse out that rat looks like? Why don't we get a couple water bottles and uh without explaining that smell? Let's see yeah. if we can look at it with a flashlight. Yeah. This bed coming out like this. Plugged up. Hot. Yeah, it's easy to get to. Let's rinse it out. I love her. <laughs> yeah, your cool is fine. 
Yeah. Rinse it out. You got water or it needs more? Some of that bigger stuff off. I got a that dirty. pressure washer here. It's not that dirty, you're right? It's not even that dirty. No, it's not. They was in front of us, right? They, they didn't see us stopping. I sure hope they did by now. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's a really good idea. I don't know what it's gonna do because this rat's not really that jammed full. No, it's not that I was expecting it to be cake. I mean it's a big rat. Even if half of it's open on the road, it should be cooling you. 97? That's like a trick reading because I'm just probably the sensors around here somewhere. Fire it up and see what happens. All part of the game. Yeah, I mean, all the vital fluids seem to be there. Worst case scenario, we tow her. Did it die? You got that oil? There is no oil pan really. The yeah. oil pan is just a flat enough pickup to pump it all into the secondary reservoir, which is what we're checking. Yeah, um, the original 900 XP razors for two years ran a dry sump. You'll see dry sumps in a lot of race applications oh, on off campers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yamaha really likes you. Yeah, right. but there is downsides to the dry sump. It's, it's like people not knowing what the yeah. dry sump is yeah. and not knowing how to. I think that's why Polaris went away from it. It is a better system. Yeah. I, I, I kind of want to yeah. hold everything. Well, you definitely got oil now. Yeah, let's see if it gets rid of the oil pressure right. That would be hilarious. Put a toe point on it. Still clean, look at that. Yeah, look at her. Pinto shouldn't be clean. <laughs> Make it work, baby. Is it all this kind of road map? 
pretty much. We have to get on the 503 for a short second. Care. But yeah, all right. Much. Other than Gilbert. Whatever. That's fine. So, wow, it's great. So the paddle wagon is now in tow mode. We are gonna tow the Arctic. Hey guys, you know how it is. Um, so right now we're um, we're towing the uh, whatever that Textron thing is called. I, it's got like eight different names depending on what era you think of. So um, we're towing it behind us. It's the Wildcat XX is what I call it. That's what it reminds me of. And um, I'm in, I'm just in too low right now. We're giving her a tow. And. Um, Hopefully everything goes okay. It died. It's got low oil pressure, high engine temp. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens when we get it back to camp. But it keeps dying on it. So uh, I'm just gonna watch my valve temp because um, luckily we got the valve uh, temp gauge here, the infrared valve temp gauge from uh, Razorback Technology. So I can watch my belt tap and make sure I'm not cooking it. Oh, it's heavy, yeah. I'm towing another machine and this machine, like the Razor, it's not designed to tow something like this. My belt won't be happy. But it is what it is. You gotta help your friends when they're down. going on with the hippies here. Okay. Yeah. Right? Good. Okay. Oh, you get to ride on top this time. Yeah. I guess you need four-wheel drive to get up there, eh? Yeah. Do you guys have a good time? Uh, we yes, had a great time. Yeah. Thanks. Woo! Thank you. Yeah, it's our pleasure, man. We all had a good time. Adrenaline rush. Adrenaline rush. This time yes. we had an adrenaline rush. Yeah, blown front diff and all. 
Yeah, adrenaline rush with adrenaline junkie. The yeah. adrenaline junkies. We're all adrenaline junkies. Yet another wild and eventful ride. We had a lot of unexpected mishaps on this ride, but nobody got hurt. Everyone made it back to camp. Most of the machines under their own power. And look at this thing. Happy Hippie has ha has one badass setup. That ramp is so cool. I gotta get me one of these. That is awesome. Rear view cameras have made trailers so easy. Right? Timmy! Who, who agrees that Tim's the MVP? <laughs> the I maximum never, send. Yeah, never a uh, dull moment. You're loaded up and ready to rock? Yeah, I'm gonna go hunt for that camera. And Are you? Yep. Where do you think it is? Uh, it's where we last, we stopped. For sure? It's gotta be. Good it luck, was, text, me, here. text me if you find it. I will. It's gonna be about a half hour out of my way on the way home. So. Beat's not getting it. Yeah. Oh. I can squeeze. Can the Hummer get through there? The Honda Civic can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See you, buddy. Yeah. Well, good time, eh? Yeah. That was awesome. We've got about like 30 seconds left on this SD card. So we. That's really awesome. Yeah. Vin Trail kept us dry. Machines got us home. Everyone had fun. Awesome ride. Well, we survived another one. We did. It was a great time. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we had a lot of carnage, actually, yeah. in the sense of like, what, we left with like nine, lost two off the get-go, <laughs> had another two diff slash axle failures, a tow home. Wow. That's a good one. It's been a while since we had one of those. Yeah. And it's not like we were riding super crazy, it just... Sometimes that happens, yeah. yeah. There was a few spots that were pretty good, but we crawled up some of those places where we had some intense like carnage and, and difficulties in the past, and we, we both walked up those. Like, yeah, and it nothing. was like wet this time, and it seemed like we walked up it. I thought it was gonna it was be, dry. The, yeah, I thought it was gonna be like the hardest Greens Mountain ever, and it turned yeah. out to be like pretty good. Yeah. So the machines, so our machines both made it really good. Fish ran into some growing pains i mean that just sucks but we'll have to get that sorted he'll come back to battle yeah. and um the i think the the real difficult one was that black textron yeah who the heck knows what's wrong with that it just fell on its face and died yeah but it did so well until it did oh yeah when yeah, those was, tires dried and hooked up on and when he was rock. in that mud too and that going through there i didn't think he was gonna make it through there and he clawed his way through just kept clawing so yeah on. it it worked well and then i mean overall i had a good time Yep. Yeah, can't wait to get back. Race place is always a good time. Isn't that right, Susie? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all decked out in our fin trail gear, so how was your first ride in that? Really good. Was, was, uh, worth it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was surprised. We went through a pretty good mud hole at the one spot, and I was anticipating my feet getting wet and cold. We went through it, and we come out, and it was dark, so I couldn't see how deep it actually was. And then I come out, and I'm like, I'm fine. That <laughs> was so cool. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's comfortable gear. Yeah, uh, it, and it, I was surprised how easy you can move in it. Like, it, like even though it is like anytime you add layers of any sort, you get bulky. Yeah, yeah. but you still could move decent. Yeah, and I mean at the end of the day, you're dry and you're warm. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's uh, I, I know it's like more of a premium price product, but I think at the end of the day, it's worth it, and you can get a, quite a few good years out of it if you take care of it. So. Yeah. I mean, you drop this much money on the side-by-side, -side, it's no fun being cold and wet. Oh man, it no, sucks. <laughs> no, so it's a good investment, right? For sure. Um, but yeah, anyways, good times, man. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think this was a really cool one. Uh, a lot of cool characters in this yeah. one. You know, we got the happy hippie, Miss Hippie. We got his buddies in the, in the Textron. We got Fish and the Boys. and. We had some night ride carnage there. We did, yeah. yeah. Seems like it's always carnage coming from one guy. <laughs> we had some we had some <laughs> camp repairs that should have been dealt with before they got here. And then we did all that and we got to the trip we got heading towards the trail and they didn't they died on the road. Yeah. Which in a way is sometimes better, right? Yeah. Instead of managing to try and get back from like a twenty five minute drive, right? So anyways, all in all, great time, great time at Ray's, great season closer because 
Yeah. Greens Mountain is done for the year. That trail closes December 1st. Oh, does it? Because all the trails around here close to snowmobile access December 1st, I believe. Oh, okay, yeah. It used but, to- Would sleds go up Greens Mountain? Not Greens, but all the connecting trails oh, are sled trails and we yeah, can't go on Yeah, because it goes them. around. Yeah. And, yeah. So okay. by default, I think it's landlocked, right? Yeah. So we'll have to go back in the spring. Yes, we will. The happy hippie, his wife, and like the crew he hangs out with oh, are such man. like just relaxed, chill people. It's like a pleasure so riding cool, with them. Yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of good stories, a lot of good vibes, all positive energy, really good time. Yeah, great people. We were really bad at ending these videos. We are. I yeah. don't want the ride to end. <laughs> Let's do more. One more day. Oh. I don't want to go back to work. Yeah, we should make movies. movies Hollywood, yeah. Netflix, Prime. I don't care. First one, first, first come, first serve. Yeah, in. come on, yeah. Amazon. Let's do yeah. it. What's that? I mean, I mean, I mean, you pay Corny double what he's making right now to ride. He'll be happy. I will sacrifice <laughs> my awesome job. It's not awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're in it too. Well, you're in it too. Don't worry. Get don't a worry. Camera girl in there yeah. for sure. I gotta, I gotta get paid six times more. Six times more than you're making right now. What's six, six times ten? zero? <laughs> Sixty-six. I'm really good. You're at that. you're hired. <laughs> yeah. So damage assessment. Anything? Uh, no. I don't. Think Look at so. these. We did the comparison a while ago in a video of the carnivore. Now it's not an XTR. It's a mega bike. Also quite a few similarities if you look at it. A little bit more sidewall chew than the carnivore. A yep. little bit more lug. Lug it's spacing. a little bit more square setup. up. Yes. It's a little bit more round. More rounded. Uh, this one here, I don't know, is the lug deeper? Or is it Maybe really when they similar? were new, they were deeper, but yeah. I rotated them a couple times already. So really similar on the tread depth. Sidewall, this one's got a touch more protection, I think. But really similar looking tires and they perform really similar yeah these ones are definitely more expensive oh I yeah yeah uh these ones are definitely cheaper um overall he, everyone loves the carnivores i'm yeah, loving the megabytes right now and i love the xtrs i think those are my top three tires for the type of riding we do yep um with the megabytes probably being on the bottom end for cost and I think the XTRs, are they more money or less money than a carnivore? I haven't actually priced the carnivores. Yeah. And these 31 carnivores, that's for the KRX. You can't go out and buy them. Yeah, so you'd have you to end up get getting a 30 dealer. or a 32 or something, right? Unless you order from the from dealer. From the dealer, which, which is always expensive. Yeah. yeah. And then my machine, I, I don't think it took any damage. Corny's looks good. Did you hit those rock sliders at all? Uh, yeah, and I skimmed plates underneath. Like I was sliding on a few. Oh, I slid rocks. on a few too, yeah. But uh, I got the UHMW under there. Works the good. Kawasaki one? Yep. They're 5 8 thick. I don't know if there's any gouges under there. Or... I'm sure you left a few marks. Yeah. Yeah, everything else looks solid. This thing's been really, really good. I mean, it, it was at the dealership recently because there's a clutch recall on it. And then Courtney was waiting and waiting and waiting. So he's like, you know what? Just put it back together. Yeah, and the, the dealership actually treated me pretty good. They just slapped it back together, even though it was more uh, labor for them. They put it back together and got me going, and there's still the old clutches in there, but... And they worked okay. Yeah, I just get the shifting feeling. It's not... Uh, they'll sort that out. Once the parts come in, you can drop it off again, right? And then yeah. they'll get it all figured. So yeah, good times. This has been a really sol solid, reliable unit for you. Very good. What? Uh, so how long you had it? Uh, just over a year now. I bought it October-ish last year. And uh, what's the mileage on it now, give or take? 1,300 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles for you, uh, American guys. About 800 to 900 miles. Okay. Um, what about uh, issues you had so far? Um, so they replaced the front knuckles, which was... Uh, recall? A recall. No, it wasn't a recall, a official recall, but they were uh, replacing anyone that messaged them. Like okay. Kawasaki, they would just replace it. A good faith repair or something Why? they called it. Because the the way the knuckle, the the stopper on it, that it would get up on top of the control arm when you were full flex turned one way, and then it would get up on top of the knuckle and it would it would snap the where the lower ball joint is. Oh, oh so definitely that. worth replacing. Oh yeah, yeah and then you just catastrophic failure you would just... and collateral damage and trying yeah. to get it off the trail yeah. and you're not running a front sway bar anymore nope I you're disconnected you're that. running the rear yeah. what are your favorite things about it then the whole machine uh Give definitely the three. suspension, suspension. That, oh that it's just like i got it set to full soft and it just articulates and yeah. bumps is just you just 
cruise over the bumps. The suspension does work very nice on them. Yeah. What would be another thing you really like about it? Um, can I throw one out there? The crawling ability? Yeah, I was gonna say the yeah. crawl ability. Yeah. The slow speed performance. Yeah, it just so smooth like butter, just crawls everything. Anything else that comes to mind? Um, the cab space, like I'm six foot two and just having room in the cab. It I is one of the roomier people, cockpits, yeah. Yeah, some people complain about not room in uh, some other machines. If, uh, there's good storage behind the seats. Like you, yeah. we always put our backpacks and stuff behind the seats. Oh yeah, the there seat. is. That's not something you get in the Razor world. No, I got my, yeah. I got my tool bag back there. Oh, that's cool, I yeah. just stuff that back there. Yeah, the cabin space is nice on these. Now, if you had to say, like, there's got to be something that you change. Oh, for sure. I'd love. Everybody wants more power, right? I'd love to more have more power, baby. More power. Yeah, I'd love to have. A, if they came out with a turbo, I'd be all over that. Yeah. As long as it still crawled as good as what it does. Now, with the power argument comes the fact that on the technical trails that we do, it does not feel underpowered. No. No. It's that straight line, that wide open trail type scenario where you kind of feel like you would want a little bit more jam, right? Yeah, going like flying down the fire roads and stuff and uh, yeah, definitely. Because you'd want to hit that pedal and kick it out a little, right? Yeah. Um, anything else that you were kind of maybe not disappointed with but thought that could get improved? Or are you pretty happy otherwise? It's yeah, beefy, it's built well, it's got the metal yeah. firewall, the control arms in the front are beefy, the rear at links are beefy, the trailing arms are beefy. It's a well put together machine. It's mean looking, right? Yep. Um, would you buy another one? Uh, I think so. If you had to go out buy a machine right now, is there another machine you'd get instead of it? Oh, wow. I, w I would probably lean towards a Razor. Yep. Um, I don't know. I, I overall want one, happy? I want one of everything. <laughs> yeah, but overall, I think you're pretty satisfied with oh, the yeah, purchase. Oh yeah, I'm really yeah. happy with this thing. Yeah, and we're happy with the way. I mean, you represent that machine really well. I think. I think a lot of people, if you read the comments, have said, you know, I watched some of your videos and I went out and bought a KRX and I'm happy with it. Yeah. Because for the type of riding we do, it really is well suited. It's very well yeah. suited. Yeah. So a lot of guys have wanted to do like walk arounds of the videos, ask like people like Corny, like what what they like about their machine. So we're gonna do this in the videos. Corny, you're the first one. Uh, right on. We'll do one with fish down the line. Uh, we'll do one with some of the other guys. And then that way you can get a better feel for this machine. It's completely soft, correct? Minus yeah. the roof and the bumper yeah. and the Nerf bars. The Nerf bars on the bumper and the roof are all custom fab. Uh, but everything else on this machine is bone stock, right? Yep. I got no regrets in buying this thing. Definitely. I basically bought it not knowing anything. Why? You took a chance on this one because it was new. Yeah. This is a first model year. Yeah. With that being said, they did a good job because there is no serious issues with it. No, other than the clutching and the knuckles, they would put Cowie stands behind them. But if, if they're looking after it, that's fine. They are, yeah. Just right now with parts, getting parts is the hardest thing. I think that's a problem everywhere right now. Yeah, that's not just Cowie. I was getting a bit of sag and uh, I cranked my tender springs all the way down. So it'd get a little bit of ride height back. So it was starting to sag, but I think every machine. There's always a bit of settling, right? Yeah. It's definitely got a different look in uh, rear suspension than some of the other machines. Yeah. Well, sweet. I like the looks of this machine. I love the rear end. I think we got to get you a tailgate. That would That'd really cool. clean it up. Yeah. And uh, the front end looks mean. I love the front end of this thing. Yes. It's one of the better looking units. A lot of people are saying you should put 35s on it, Corny. <laughs> 35. Supposedly these things handle 35 stock. They do to a certain point. If Not. You start really bashing it. Yeah. One of the first things that breaks is the drive shaft going to the diff. Oh, this guy's already researched this. Oh right? yeah. The drive shaft going to the diff breaks. Uh, axles hold up amazing in these things. That's cool. That's one of the last things to break in these machines, is the axles. So um, w if you were getting in your next tire, what would you go tire-wise? 32 or 33? 32 is the biggest I would go, I think. You think you'd go yeah. like a 32, yeah. 32, because these 31 carnivores, you can only get them through Kawasaki. So yeah, so you wouldn't do that. that. And the ground clearance and all that is good. So yeah, 32 would be a good tire that wouldn't stress it. You can still pin it to win it, right? Yeah. Because that's one thing you don't want to... 
So it gets tough sometimes when you put too much tire on it because it works well in certain areas and then you really got to baby it. Yeah, you areas. see a lot of guys really babying the machine because they don't want to break. And then you get Tim, for example, in the Wildcat we were talking about. He's got these little tires and he does so well because he can spin those so hard. Yeah, Man, little bald eagles, he just... That machine is wild, wild. wild. Yeah. He defies all laws with that thing. Yeah, like it, it, it makes no sense. It, does, it makes no sense. Unbelievable. Awesome machine. <laughs> we just keep going and going. Yeah. How, many, how much time we got? Yeah. Anyways, yeah, thanks, man. You can load her up if you want. I just wanted to do that little closing, button up the video. I find that's where sometimes I fail because you finish the ride and you're like all loading up and then you never do like the closing yeah, little. See you later, we're gone. Yeah. Well, the battle wagon did well. No issues on it. Tires worked awesome. Rims held up. Nothing to report. No rear sway bar on this ride was sketchy and fun. I'm getting more used to it. Loading up the hauler. Courtney's got a dodge. Man, that setup Happy Hippie has, awesome, oh, eh? Yeah. That's, That's so, so cool. cool. The hydraulic lift up and down So down. cool. It makes it super tall, but it yeah, is Yeah, awesome. it is so cool. Yeah. Bunch of people have been asking me about my trailer setup, actually. So, I mean, it's nothing too fancy. I got this big aluminum storage box with the two deep cycle batteries in there, the fuse block, uh, power inverter. I got a small air compressor, some jack stands, some tools and a battery charger, some extension cords, some airline, a tire kit with a bunch of tire supplies. We got a, the bead buster there. That's a new tire machine. But until then, I used to have this tire machine mounted on there. And then under here, it bolts onto the trailer. There's a frame under there for it. We've got the jerry can. Up here, I got a tire rack that holds about eight wheels and tires. Uh, originally, I built this trailer for my drift car and my road racing car, but it works really well for the Razor, actually. So now it's multi-purpose, just a tandem axle, two 3,500-pound axles. That's it, nothing fancy. Works great, though. Great trailer setup. Um, really old trailer. This trailer is probably from the 60s or something originally. It's been revived a few times. I got a winch under there. I got some... Emmy quick buckles. These are great. And yeah, that's it. Nice LED lighting upgrade to the whole trailer and new brakes, new tires. Paul's awesome. It's got years of life left in it. Alrighty. Load it up. Good to go. Razor's idling, just charging up the battery a little bit. Got our garbage. College is all clean. Just gonna go square up with Scott. We are loaded up, we are squared up, and we are ready to go. Already looking forward to the next time at Ray's place, guys. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you are within the three to four to even five hour range, and you're looking for a place to do a good three day, let's say stay and a good ride where there's some good trails here, as well as some good trails locally, then hit up Ray's place, shoot him an email, shoot him a call, leave him a message, they'll get back to you. Uh, it's a really cool place to stay and it's really affordable. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend it. It's one of our favorite places. We've been, we, since we came here the first time, we like we have just been straight coming here yeah. over and over and we're still not bored because there's a lot of local trail in the area. My goal for next season is to branch out do some riding in some other areas. Happy Hippie wants to ride. They know all the trails in the Dorset area. I've been wanting to ride there for ages. And there's a few other places we'd like to ride. So next season, we're gonna plan some stuff and go a little more exploring with COVID and all that gra garbage going on. It's really made the last season or two kind of weird, but hopefully now things are cleaning up. We can um, we can kind of do a bit more exploring again and also hopefully head south of the border in, a real, in the next little while and do some riding in Tennessee, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, stuff like that. And it's usually a pretty good drive especially on a Sunday for the Canadians we got to drive through Toronto so you just never know what that's gonna be like a staple of every road trip McDonald's but up 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 I'm loving it 
so good for you. Connected to your phone and is reminding you that 911 assist is set to off. The good old classic Big Mac, guys. You can't go wrong. Mmm. Yummy. Not as big and macky as it should be. Times have changed. Who else loves McDonald's? I mean, I kind of associate it with traveling. I don't eat it a lot, but it just tastes so right, doesn't it? Yeah. I'd say, hey, McDonald's sponsor us, but I mean, you know what? I want to get the most out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> we can't eat McDonald's every night. No. Hey, guys. Well, it's Wednesday. Being back from the trip for a few days now. It's being cold, so I wait until today when it's a nice mild day to wash the machine. And as always, this is the worst part of the job. And the razor's gonna have to go under the knife a little bit. As you've probably picked up from the last few videos, I am having some transmission issues. I have talked to Polaris. Um, they're willing to work with me and hopefully figure everything out and still get everything covered under warranty because my machine still has about six months of warranty left on it. I got the five-year warranty, which I always recommend people do because if anything, it adds a lot to your resale value. Um, no issues, no issues from the last trip at all. Everything worked really well. You guys saw how well the, the battle wagon worked. You saw how well it's articulating with the rear sway bar disconnected. Um, I'm actually considering um, OX Off-Road or the Halo Lockers company makes a electronic disconnecting rear sway bar for the Razor, which gives you pretty much full articulation when it's clicked off yet still prevent some of that really sloppy lean on some of the off-camber situations. And then when you hit the connect button, it gives you a full rear sway bar. So it's gonna be the best of both worlds for me. I think that's the route I'm gonna go. But the first mod I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go with the, um, I'm gonna order up a set of, or by the time you watch this, I probably would have already ordered up a set of shock therapy uh, dual rate springs for the front and the rear. And I really think that's gonna make this machine handle the way I want it to finally. Once I get those in, I'm also going to put their front limit straps on to get rid of that unloading noise with the bigger tires on the front end, the clunk. And um, once that's all on and done, I will do the rear sway bar. Right now it's just zip tied up, out of the way. As you can see, the sway bar links are disconnected. And boy, oh boy, is it comfortable. It feels so good with the rear sway bar off. I really like it. it last ride, I really kind of got used to it. Um, the weird feeling of feeling like you're always gonna tip over and the wheels going off the ground. But everything else with the racer worked well. These tires, honestly, guys, I was a little skeptical. I thought these would be significantly worse than my XTR 370s from System 3 they may have actually worked better on Green's Mountain. They're a little smaller all around. Um, the XTR 370s measure large. I'm gonna measure these. Um, Tusk advertised them um, as, a, as a true 32 inch tire at 12 PSI. So, um, I mean, they measured them. They measured them on a seven inch rim at, at 12 PSI as 32 inches. Why don't we measure them? All right, got the tape measure. And now, mind you, they were measuring at 12 PSI and it was probably 12 PSI on a mounted wheel, not on a vehicle. I'm gonna measure what a true sizing is like with the, with the wheel on the vehicle, with the weight of the vehicle on the tire. Because um, this thing definitely, just by looking at it, does not look like a 32. Okay, as you can see, with 7 PSI in the front, it measures to a 30.5. So this is a 30.5 at 7 PSI with the machine on the ground, um, listed as a 32. Um, the, this is hard. Um, I'm gonna have to measure my XTR 370 but I'm pretty sure with the weight of the machine on it at the same PSI, it actually measures 32. You guys can see that does not look like a 32 sitting on the machine size-wise. So um, it's not a hit at the tire manufacturer or anything like that. This is like a common thing. Um, there's no set standard on how to measure these tires. Some of the cheaper tires are, are definitely measured on a rim with like 30 pounds in them. And then you get them home and they're significantly smaller. Some of the big brands actually a lot of them measure small. 
Um, they give you like a textbook measurement. I want a real world measurement of what type of tire size I'm gonna have when it's on the machine. Now mind you, I understand machines are different weights, um, tire size, tire pressures and, and rim sizes and all that also play a role, but um, that's a big difference from, from the advertised 32 uh, being 30.5. Let's check the rear. The rear has nine pounds and obviously all the engine weight. Nine pounds on a 15 inch rim, seven inches wide, measures in at just under 30 and a half. This is a 30 inch tire. Yeah, that's a 30 inch tire and it looks like a 30 inch tire. Um, so that's probably why it performed better. I probably had too much tire before. I'm, I'm clutched for a 32 and crawling on the rock, these 30s worked really good. I had more than enough ground clearance and I was able to spin them up a lot better and a lot more confidently than I could my, my big, heavy XCR 370s. These are quite a bit n n lighter. I'll, I'll weigh them um, when I get them off to do the tire swap and we'll see. I'll slap an XTR 370 on there and we'll compare um, the heights at the same tire pressure front and rear. All right, so next step is we're gonna wash this thing before we do any more tire measurements. I'm gonna get it all clean, and then we'll mess around with that stuff. So enough talking. You got the WR Performance Products. It's a Canadian-based company. They've got dealers all across the USA, and they're building their Canadian network as well. You can check them out online. This stuff works great. Even my buddy Zach at um, Dirt Dudes UTV uses this stuff. He's the one who actually put me onto this stuff and then it fi I found out that these guys headquarters is 40 minutes from my house. What are the odds of that? Pretty cool. Um, it's weird how word spreads in these, in these messed up ways. You'd think I'd know about this company, but I didn't. And my buddy in the States told me about it and it turns out they're pretty much my neighbors. So we're gonna soak it down with some foam. We're gonna let it sit for a little while. We're gonna hose it off. Dirty. Shout out to Dig Rig Power Sports that, um, that elbow for the CVT exhaust is a game changer. I'm loving it. I love having the confidence of knowing I can go like steering wheel deep without getting any water in my CVT exhaust. So the machine's not that dirty. The ride up at Ray's place, the soil they've got up there is more of a sandy type soil. So it washes off a lot easier than a clay based soil. So it shouldn't be too bad. I find this WR Performance Total Wash works really well with one application and some sit time. But here what I did is I soaked it down in the wash, then I rinsed it off, and then I soaked it down one more time really well and really let it sit and penetrate and creep into all the areas. And I went around and I hosed it off. The machine is going to the dealership for a tranny replacement. So I wanted to make sure it's extra clean. Nobody likes working on a dirty machine. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, and out of respect, I like to drop my machines off spotless and pick them up spotless. Uh, it's also a good way, like I've said in the past, to identify any other issues on the machine. So yeah, let it sit, rinse it off, and then you're left with a really nice finished product. Well, the razor is clean, squeaky clean, really clean. Looks good. No scrubbing, no hand washing, no brushing. All just with the pressure washer and there is no haze left over. That's what the cleaner does a good job on. It gets rid of all that like kind of haze that sometimes is left over if you don't use any sort of a cleaning solution. That's that haze that once you pressure wash, you gotta go over with like the sponge or the, or the mitt and get that off. But um, this kind of skips that step. Does it make your razor clean in five minutes? No, nothing does. You still gotta pressure wash for, um, probably spent about two hours cleaning it, but it's spotless, it's squeaky clean. The only thing I could do more now is drop the skid plate, which I'm probably gonna do because I haven't had it off for a while, and I'm gonna be taking it to the dealership to get some training work done. Um, since that's happening, I'll just pull the skid plate so they don't have to deal with it, and I'll wash all out in there so it's nice and clean for the mechanics to work on. While it's clean, I'm also gonna do a few other little things that I've been thinking about for a little while and I'll take advantage of this little downtime window I've got here for maintenance before the full-out winter riding season begins. Nice and clean. Clean enough for me, that's for sure. It's no, sh it's no trailer clean. I'm not trying to win any show and shines. So for me, it's good enough. Um, I mean, it's a battle wagon. It's a trail monster. It's not, <laughs> it's, you, you can't wash off the, the scratches. You can't wash off the, 
scrapes and the dings in the rust spots and stuff like that. But realistically, I'm more concerned about performance than looks. That's how I've always been. So once the razor is clean, the last step is if you use your fin trail, you got to wash your fin trail. So we got the boots, his and hers, and the his and hers fin trail. It's not super dirty this time around, mostly just the waders and the boots, and it's pretty sandy, so it should clean out pretty nice. So uh, I'm gonna wash that now, just hose it off. I showed you how to do that in a previous video, don't need to go over that again. Guys, ch check out the Shopify store, head on over to the Shopify store, get yourself some cool stickers, some swag, uh, you can get some shirts. We'll have hats coming soon, hopefully, and hopefully we'll have some new shirt designs and some sticker designs coming soon. All the proceeds generated from the Shopify store go directly back into the channel to make more content for you guys to enjoy. We do have a few Patreons. Um, I made a Patreon account because I had a few people ask about it. So if you want, we have a Patreon account and if you want to support us there, that'd be great too. Uh, we've got a few supporters out there. Thanks DadBod, your newest supporter. Uh, DadBod signed up on the Patreon and he's helping make these videos happen. So thanks for that. Thanks for all the support, whether it's a comment or a thumbs up or a subscription, that all counts to me. Uh, whether you order some stuff from the Shopify store or not, it doesn't matter to me really. I'd like it if you did because that kind of increases my working budget to bring up the production value of these videos by getting new cameras like the GoPro 10 I'm filming on now and my camcorder and stuff like that and um, constantly buying new hard drives for storage and, and all sorts of all sorts of behind the scenes kind of expenses that you don't really expect until you start running a YouTube channel. Um, especially a channel that, that I put so much time into the production value of the content uh, that I do need some specific tools aside from just the generic one camera GoPro kind of show. Uh, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes than that. With that being said, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video and ride safe out there. All right, you must be here for more info on this badass fin trail giveaway. We'll be giving away a full set of fin trail wading gear, which includes a pair of waders, the jacket, and a pair of boots. In order to enter this giveaway, you need to leave a comment in the comment section of this video using the hashtag Fintrail, like you see on your screen. Also, you need to head over to the Fintrail YouTube channel and subscribe to their channel because there will be a video posted there that announces the winner on or after May 7th, 2022. Just a heads up, there is a ton of scammers taking part in all of these giveaways on YouTube and on social media, so don't fall for any of their schemes. We will never ask you to contact us using WhatsApp or something like that. Do not respond to anyone leaving comments like that. The winner will be announced in the video on the Fintrail YouTube channel. That is the only way you guys are gonna find out who the winner is, so make sure you tune in there. If you need more details on the rules of this giveaway, then just head on over to www.adrenalinejunkieprod.com where we'll have a detailed set of rules and specifications for this giveaway. Good luck everyone, thanks for taking part, thanks for checking out the video, and we'll see you in the next one because we've got a lot more awesome giveaways coming your way in upcoming videos.